English Story Library. Aladdin and the Magic Lamp. A boy named Aladdin lived in a city brimming with lively bazaars and enchanting mysteries. Aladdin wasn't rich. His clothes were worn, and his shoes had holes. Yet his heart was filled with kindness and dreams of a different life. Each day, Aladdin woke up with the sun, ready to work. From mending pots to sweeping shops, he would do any job to earn a few pennies. Though his hands were rough from work, they were always ready to help others. His laughter echoed in the city's narrow alleyways, a melody that lightened people's hearts. One sweltering afternoon, while the city buzzed around him, Aladdin found himself in a part of the market he had never seen before. It was a forgotten corner. Hidden behind a curtain of colorful fabrics and fragrant spices, cobwebs hung in the corners, and a thin layer of dust coated the ancient artifacts. It was as if time itself had stopped in this corner of the marketplace. An odd object caught Aladdin's eye among the piles of forgotten goods. It was an old lamp covered in years of grime. It didn't gleam like the brass pots around it or sparkle like the jeweled trinkets, yet it held an unexplainable allure. Its surface was etched with intricate designs and shaped like a teapot, with a long spout and a handle on the other side. Intrigued, Aladdin picked up the dusty lamp, his fingers tracing the strange patterns. It was heavier than it looked and colder, as if it hadn't seen sunlight for years. He turned it over, noticing a small inscription, but the words were too faded to read. With the lamp in his possession, Aladdin felt a strange sensation. His heart pounded in his chest. His palms felt sweaty. He wasn't sure why he felt this way, but he knew this was no ordinary lamp. He decided to take it home. After a long day of work, Aladdin sat down in his humble home. The dusty old lamp in his hands. The lamp was oddly captivating. Its surface covered in intricate designs that seemed to dance in the dim light. Curious, he decided to give the lamp a good rub, hoping to reveal more of its hidden beauty. As he rubbed the lamp, a strange thing happened. A swirling cloud of colorful smoke began to spill out from the spout. Aladdin jumped back, startled. The smoke filled the room, swirling and twirling around him. Then it started to take form. Aladdin watched in awe as it shaped into a towering figure, a genie with a sparkling smile and eyes full of mischief. Good evening, Aladdin. The genie boomed in a deep voice that echoed around the room. I am the genie of the lamp, at your service. You have freed me, and in return. I will grant you three wishes. Aladdin could hardly believe his ears. He had heard tales of genies and wishes, but never thought he'd meet one in person. Yet here he was, standing before a real-life genie. He felt a mix of excitement and fear, but the genie's warm smile and cheerful nature quickly put him at ease. Unlike the frightening creatures from the stories, the genie was surprisingly friendly. He had a booming laugh that filled the room and a great sense of humor. He teased Aladdin, making jokes about his dusty home and ragged clothes, but there was no malice in his words, just gentle humor. As the night went on, Aladdin and the genie talked. They shared stories and laughter. The genie's tales of ancient times and magical wonders captivating Aladdin. It was the first time Aladdin had felt such joy and companionship in his lonely life. The genie wasn't just a magical being who could grant wishes; he was becoming Aladdin's friend. By the time the sun began to peek over the horizon, Aladdin had almost forgotten about the wishes. He was too caught up in the wonder of it all, the magic, and the newfound friendship. But as the first rays of dawn filled the room, The genie reminded him, "Don't forget, Aladdin. You have three wishes. Use them wisely." Aladdin nodded, 
a thoughtful look on his face. He knew he had a great responsibility. But with the genie by his side, he felt ready to face whatever came next. As Aladdin drifted off to sleep, the genie, now a tiny flame inside the lamp, watched over him. They were a peculiar pair, a poor boy and a magical genie, but they had found an unexpected friendship in the heart of the bustling city. And for Aladdin, life was about to become a whole lot more exciting. From that night on, the lamp no longer sat forgotten and dusty. It had become a beacon of hope, a symbol of the magic and friendship that had entered Aladdin's life. And the genie, once trapped within the confines of the lamp, was now a friend, a protector, and a guide in Aladdin's grand adventure. After becoming friends with the magical genie, Aladdin took his time to think about his first wish. He remembered the hungry faces in the streets of his bustling city. His heart ached at the thought of their empty bellies. It was then he knew what he wanted. One day, as the sun painted the sky with hues of orange and pink, Aladdin held the magic lamp in his hands. He looked into the genie's twinkling eyes and said, I wish to provide enough food for all the hungry people in my city. The genie smiled, pleased by Aladdin's selflessness. He clapped his hands together with a nod, and a golden glow enveloped them. As the light receded, a feast unlike any other appeared. Tables as long as rivers stretched across the city, laden with platters of juicy fruits, towers of creamy pastries, and bowls overflowing with delicious stews. The aroma of the feast wafted through the city, drawing the hungry and curious from their homes. Wide-eyed and with stomachs grumbling, they gathered around the tables. Aladdin stood at the head of the feast, inviting everyone to partake. A murmur of disbelief spread through the crowd before turning into a cheer of joy. Young and old, rich and poor, feasted on the sumptuous spread. The city that was once filled with the sounds of grumbling stomachs was now filled with laughter and merry chatter. The feasting continued well into the night under a blanket of twinkling stars. The people, their bellies full and hearts content, thanked Aladdin for his kindness. Children played and danced, their faces smeared with the remnants of sweet treats. The elderly shared stories of the miraculous feast, their eyes sparkling with joy. As Aladdin watched his city, a warm feeling spread through him. The sight of his people, happy and satisfied, was better than any treasure. He realized that true wealth was not in gold or jewels, but in the smiles of his people, in their happiness. Watching Aladdin from the sidelines, the genie felt a sense of respect for the young boy. Aladdin's first wish was not for wealth or power but for the well-being of others. It was a wish born out of love and kindness. That night, as Aladdin lay down to sleep, his heart was full of happiness. He knew he had made the right choice for his first wish. The genie's smile was the last thing he saw as he drifted off to sleep. Deep in the shadows of the city lived a wicked sorcerer. His eyes were sharp, and his heart colder than a winter night. He was a man of dark magic, always in pursuit of power. When he heard about Aladdin's feast, his curiosity piqued. How could a poor boy create such a banquet? There could be only one explanation, the magic lamp. The sorcerer had been searching for the magic lamp for many years. He knew of its power to grant wishes. Dreams of wielding that power danced in his mind. With the lamp, he thought, I could be the most powerful ruler in the world. A wicked smile played on his lips. He devised a cunning plan. He would disguise himself as a wealthy merchant, befriend Aladdin, and steal the lamp. The sorcerer spent many hours preparing his disguise. He donned rich robes of crimson and gold and adorned himself with shining jewels. The following day, he arrived at Aladdin's humble home. With a smooth voice, he greeted Aladdin, Dear boy, I've heard of your good deeds. 
I am a merchant, and I've come to offer you wealth in exchange for your incredible lamp. As a humble boy, Aladdin was taken aback by the lavish praise and the offer. The sorcerer was convincing, his disguise impeccable. He talked of treasures and of a life free from worry. Think of your mother, he urged, and of all the comfort you could bring her. The lamp, to Aladdin, was a friend, not a tool for riches. He was torn, but he remembered Jeannie's words, Be careful who you trust, Aladdin. The sorcerer's sweet words raised suspicion, but Aladdin was unsure. He promised to think over the offer and bid the merchant farewell. Alone again, Aladdin turned the lamp over in his hands. He looked at it not as a source of wishes but as a companion. He thought of the genie inside and their shared laughter. He thought of the hungry people who had eaten heartily at his feast. And he felt a shiver of fear. Was he about to lose his friend? The sorcerer, on the other hand, left Aladdin's home feeling triumphant. His plan was in motion. He was closer to the lamp, closer to the power he craved. He returned to his dark corner of the city, waiting for the day the lamp would be his. The thought of his upcoming victory sweetened his dreams that night. And so, the city slept, oblivious to the sorcerer's wicked plan. Aladdin held the lamp close, unaware of the danger that was about to occur him. As the moon shone high in the starry sky, a storm of greed and trickery was brewing. In the heart of the city, the evil sorcerer, cloaked in the guise of a wealthy merchant, patiently watched Aladdin. His eyes sparkled with greed and malice as he observed Aladdin's lamp. The sorcerer, known to few as Marzouk, knew the lamp held magic beyond ordinary comprehension. He coveted its power and yearned to make it his own. Marzouk set his plan into motion. He opened his lavish market stall, filled with glittering jewels and exotic trinkets that caught the eyes of everyone passing by. He knew Aladdin couldn't resist such a fascinating display. As expected, Aladdin, with his curious nature, was drawn to the shimmering stall like a moth to a flame. The sorcerer greeted Aladdin with a warm smile. Welcome, young man. I see you have an eye for beautiful things, he said, his voice smooth and persuasive. Aladdin looked around, his eyes wide with wonder. Marzouk continued, I see you carry an old lamp. How about a trade? Your old lamp for any item from my stall. Aladdin hesitated. Unsure. He thought about his friend, the genie. But then he looked at the trinkets and remembered how poor he was. He made a decision, hoping to surprise the genie with a new, grander lamp. As Aladdin handed over the magic lamp, Marzouk's smile widened. He took the lamp, his fingers brushing against the old metal. The moment his touch met the lamp, the genie appeared, looking confused. But before the genie could say a word, Marzouk quickly commanded, I wish to be the most powerful ruler in the world. The genie looked at Aladdin, then at Marzouk. He was bound to the lamp, and he had to obey. With a heavy heart, the genie granted the wish. The transformation was instant. Marzouk's simple merchant robes transformed into grand royal garments, and a sparkling crown appeared on his head. Aladdin watched in shock realizing he'd been tricked. The marketplace turned silent, everyone bowing down to the new ruler. Marzouk laughed, his voice echoing throughout the city, filled with triumph. He now possessed the power he'd always yearned for. The once kind and bustling city fell under the shadow of a cruel ruler. Aladdin was left standing in the now silent market, his heart heavy with regret. He looked at the spot where the lamp once lay, determined to make things right. He knew he had made a terrible mistake, but he also knew he had the courage to face it. It was a bright morning in the bustling city. Aladdin, with his heart full of hope and courage, 
was not the kind of boy to give up easily. He woke up early, ready to put his clever plan into action. His mind was clear, his spirit unbroken. He knew he had to recover the magic lamp. Genie is my friend. I won't let him be trapped with that wicked sorcerer, Aladdin vowed to himself. The city was still quiet, with only the early birds chirping their morning songs. This was the perfect time to act. Aladdin knew the sorcerer was now the most powerful ruler in the world, but he also knew that real power came from the heart. It was not about having all the gold or commanding a large army. It was about doing what was right and helping others. The sorcerer was staying in the grandest palace of the city, surrounded by tall, intimidating walls. It was heavily guarded, but Aladdin had a plan. He remembered an old, hidden passage that he had discovered during his days of exploring the city. He carefully made his way through the narrow alleyways, avoiding the gaze of the guards. He reached the old passage and descended into the darkness with a deep breath. It was cold and eerie, but Aladdin pressed on, his mind focused on his mission. He emerged in the palace gardens, a beautiful sight filled with colorful flowers and towering trees. He hid behind a large bush, scanning the area for the sorcerer. Soon, he saw the sorcerer walking in the garden the lamp clutched tightly in his hands. Aladdin could see the genie looking sad and trapped. He waited for the right moment, his heart pounding in his chest. Aladdin sprang into action when the sorcerer got distracted by a beautiful peacock in the garden. He ran as fast as he could, grabbed the lamp from the surprised sorcerer, and disappeared back into the secret passage. Safe in his home, Aladdin held the lamp close to his heart. He rubbed it gently, and the genie appeared. He looked tired but relieved to see Aladdin. Aladdin said, Genie, for my second wish, I want you to undo the sorcerer's wish. The genie nodded, and the sorcerer's power vanished with a wave of his hand. The city was free again, and the people celebrated their liberation. Aladdin, though tired, felt a sense of joy and accomplishment. He had used his bravery and wit to outsmart the evil sorcerer and knew he could do anything if he put his mind to it. But as he looked at the genie, he knew he had one more wish to make, a wish that would change everything. Aladdin looked at the magical lamp in his hands, a gentle smile playing on his lips. The lamp was warm, almost pulsating with magic. He could feel the anticipation in the air, the genie waiting for his final wish. Aladdin took a deep breath, his heart pounding in his chest. Genie, Aladdin started, I have thought about my last wish. His voice echoed in the silence of the room. The noise from the bustling city outside seemed distant as if the world was waiting for his words. The genie appeared in a cloud of blue smoke his eyes curious. What is it, Aladdin? He asked, his voice kind and patient. Aladdin took a moment, his gaze fixed on the genie. He thought about the adventures they had, the troubles they overcame, and the bond they forged. A bond that was not just between a master and his servant, but between friends. I wish, Aladdin began, his voice steady. I wish for your freedom, genie. The room fell silent, the words hanging in the air. The genie blinked, his eyes wide in surprise. What did you say, Aladdin? He asked, his voice barely above a whisper. Did you say, freedom? Yes, genie, Aladdin said with a nod. I want you to be free. You have been a great friend and deserve to be free. His words were sincere, his eyes shining with determination. The genie was silent for a moment, his gaze softening. Aladdin, he said, no one has ever wished for my freedom before. You are truly kind and selfless. With that, the genie's body began to glow. The magic swirled around him, 
sparkling and dancing in the air. And then, with a flash of light, the genie was free. He looked at his hands, a wide smile spreading across his face. Thank you, Aladdin, he said, his voice filled with emotion. I am free. I can travel the world, see the sights, taste the food. Oh, the places I'll go. He laughed, his laughter echoing in the room. Aladdin smiled at the genie, happiness filling his heart. He had done the right thing. He knew it. In the days that followed, Aladdin used his cleverness and bravery to make a better life for himself and his city. He helped the poor, stood up to the bullies, and spread kindness wherever he went. The city flourished under his care, and the people loved him. And the genie? Well, he traveled the world just like he wanted. But every now and then, he would return to visit his friend, Aladdin. Because, after all, freedom was much more enjoyable when you had a friend to share it with. And so, Aladdin and the genie lived their lives filled with adventures and joy. And they lived happily ever after, just as it should be in every fairy tale.